This is the second video in a two-part series where I build a box to illuminate and display four lithophane panels. If you haven't already, I recommend you watch the first video here. In this video, I'll build the base, apply the finish to all the parts, install the lamp socket and cord, and trim the lithophane panels for final assembly. Enjoy! Unfortunately, my first idea for a base was not a good one. It involved using two discs, each a half inch thick. The bottom disc would be larger, approximately three to three and a half inches in diameter. The next disc would be smaller at only about one and three quarter inches in diameter. The smaller disc would sit on top of the larger disc and support the box. The problem was that the diameter of the smaller disc did not provide enough stability for the box. It was just too tippy. I got as far as milling and cutting out the two discs before I recognized the problem. I originally thought that I needed to minimize the friction between the bottom of the box and whatever it directly sat on. However, I realized that the stability of the box was much more important and the friction just wasn't really an issue. So I cut off another piece of walnut and started over. This piece I milled to a thickness of three quarters of an inch. Next, I cut out about as large of a circle as the piece of stock would allow. My only constraint in this regard was that it needed to fit within the size of the bottom plywood panel of the box. That meant a maximum diameter of less than five inches. After using a compass to mark out a circle, I drilled a small hole in the center of the circle and used a screw and washers to fix the piece to a scrap piece of thin plywood. I snugged up the screw but left it loose enough to be able to spin the piece of walnut. I pushed the assembly through the bandsaw until the screw was in line with the front edge of the blade. I then clamped the plywood to the bandsaw table and spun the walnut to cut out the circle. Next, I used a one inch Forstner bit to drill a hole a little over halfway down through the top of the disc. I used the hole that I had drilled to hold the disc in place while cutting it out as a guide for the Forstner bit. I then cut off about a two inch piece of one inch dowel. This will serve two purposes. It will fit through a hole in the base of the box to secure the box, and it will also hold the socket for the bulb that will illuminate the panels. I found and marked the center of one end of the dowel and then proceeded to drill two holes into the end of the dowel. The first was a 5 8 inch hole about an inch deep. The socket would fit into this hole. The next was a smaller 3 8 inch hole that extended the rest of the way through the dowel for the cord to pass through. I then glued the dowel into the 1 inch hole I had previously drilled in the base disc with the larger 5 8 inch hole facing up. I now cut out a new piece of plywood for the base because the fit of the original base that I had cut out was too loose. The new base needed just a little bit of work with a block plane and then the fit was just what I wanted. I drilled a one inch hole in the center of the base panel to fit over the dowel that I had just secured to the base disc. This hole needed to be widened a little to create a loose enough fit with the dowel to allow the box to spin freely. I did this with my oscillating spindle sander. Once I was satisfied with the fit, I glued the bottom panel into the base of the box. There was one more hole to drill. This was a 3 8 inch hole in the side of the base disc. This hole extends through to the center of the disc and meets up with the bottom of the 3 8 inch hole in the dowel that is glued into the disc. This creates a 3 8 inch tunnel, if you will, from the side of the disc connecting to the bottom of the 5 8 inch hole that will hold the socket, allowing the lamp cord to pass out of the bottom of the box without interfering with the box's ability to rotate. Now I used the oscillating belt sander to clean up the side of the disc where the bandsaw had left tooth marks. After having the sander kick the base out of my hands a few times, I finally wised up and clamped a block to the sander table to keep that from happening. Next I worked on my plan for wiring up the lamp. I started by removing the switch from the cord. One of the two wires was already cut inside the switch, however the other was not. After cutting this other wire, I was able to remove the little metal mounting bracket from the socket as it wasn't needed. Now I only had the socket with a short pigtail to work with, which is what I wanted. I realized that I couldn't get the wire through the 90 degrees turn at the bottom of the dowel. I ended up using a long twist tie as a snake. I was able to feed the twist tie through the 3 8 inch tunnel, tape it to the end of the cord, and then use it to pull the cord through the tunnel. Next, I trimmed the lithophane panels to fit into the sides of the box. The edges of the panels were very easy to trim with a block plane. There are some slight variations in the sides of the box, so I was careful to mark each lithophane panel and its corresponding side so that I could be sure to install them back into the sides for which they had been trimmed. With the final assembly plan in place, I moved on to applying the finish. I started with a hand rubbed coat of super blonde shellac followed by a brushed on coat. After letting that dry thoroughly, I did some light sanding with very fine sandpaper 
and then applied a couple more hand rub coats to even out the finish. Lastly, I applied a coat of wax to everything, paying particular attention to the underside of the box and the top of the base disc and dowel to ensure the box rotated smoothly. It was now time to move on to the final assembly. The first step was to install the cord using the method I had figured out previously. I pressed the socket firmly into the top of the dowel. With that done, I needed to reassemble the other part of the cord and switch. I stripped off a small amount of insulation from either side of the cut I had made. I then pressed the exposed wires together and completed the connection with a little bit of solder. Once cool, I wrapped the exposed connection with a piece of electrical tape. I was now ready to reattach the switch, screw in a bulb, and test the electrical to make sure it all worked. Lastly, I installed the lithophane panels and turned on the box. Unfortunately, I forgot to remove one of the pieces of tape I was using as a label to keep track of the panels. I didn't realize it until I had turned on the light, so I had to carefully remove the panel to remove the tape. The box was now done. Because of the way lithophanes work, it is a little tricky to capture them in video or photos in a way that does them justice. They are definitely best viewed in person. I have limited experience with lighting and photography. I tried capturing the finished project several different ways, most of which didn't come out too well. If the ambient lighting was too bright, it was difficult to get the camera to capture the lithophanes properly. Conversely, if the ambient lighting was too dim, it created a different challenge of getting the camera set up correctly for a low light shot in such a way that the lithophane was not overexposed. Hopefully you can get a sense from these photos how cool the lithophanes look when illuminated. Overall, I'm really happy with how this turned out. My son's girlfriend loves it, and I have already received an order for another one to be used as a retirement gift for a doctor. If I have the opportunity to make more of these, I hope to keep refining and improving the design. If you have any questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up. Also, subscribe to my channel and click the bell to be notified of new videos. Be sure to check out the description below where I'll have links to my website and social media. There will also be other information and links relevant to this video. Thanks again and see you next time.